Welcome back to the second video in our four part series of the behind the scenes of the world of Macintosh. If you didn't check out our first video made in the USA, make sure you go check it out. But for now, we're gonna get into the next part of the production process. Welcome back everybody, this is Warren from Gramophone. I'm here with Charlie from Macintosh and we're here with our behind the scenes part two, chassis building here at Macintosh. As well, like and subscribe. That way you don't miss out on any of our content. Charlie, tell me a little bit about the materials that go into making an amazing Macintosh product. Yeah, so obviously one of the most important parts of the unit is the chassis. Um, we use US grade steel. Uh, we use two types of steel. We use a, a cold roll, which if you look at the product, that's all got to be powder coated after it's processed. And obviously the color of Mac is black. Um, the other type of metal that we use is people look at it and say it's a chrome chassis. It's really not chrome. It's a super mirrored titanium finish, stainless steel. And we do all the processing here in house. We'll do the stamping, the bending. And then the last thing we do, like I said, if it's not stainless, it has to be powder coated. After the powder coating process, we'll send it through to be um, riveted, which means put the fasteners in. But unlike the glass printing, where we've switched over to a um, more LCP type printing, uh, the sheet metal is still done the old fashioned way with good old silk screen. You guys are using US product. I, I love that about you know yeah. Macintosh. How long have they been doing that? Uh, since the beginning. You know, That's awesome. I Obviously, there are some parts that you just can't get in the U.S. anymore, but whenever available, we, we want to buy local. I love that. In regards to the glass part of the chassis, yep. there's there's a bit that goes into that, correct? Correct. If you want to take a look, we can take a look. And we do it all in a very unique fashion with a high-pressure water jet. You know what I love about Mac? It's that beautiful front fascia super gorgeous with that glass panel. How is that design? Like, how do you create that? Well, we created over in the engineering department, obviously part of the graphic design is key to what the model is going to be, right? You know, Mac is known for black glass and the signature blue meter. And we've used it now oh, all the way since, you know, the early seventies is when the first meters actually went on product. The last one on during the mid 60s from that time frame. Obviously, the process as to how we make the glass has changed over the years. Originally, we used to use abrasive drill bits and water as the cutting aggregate or coolant and literally set and cut and snap glass the old fashioned way. By today's standards, we're actually on our third generation water jet machine, hmm. which actually pretty simply takes the layout of the front panel, DXF file. We load it in the uh, uh, CAD system that's resident here on the water jet. And basically it moves kind of like a laser in the XY coordinate and just uses very high pressure water, air, and a substance called garnet is the aggregate. That's the cutting abrasive. And any place we want to cut a hole, we make a pierce at 5,000 PSI. And after the holes are all pierced and we want to come back and cut any shape that we want, we ramp the machine up to 50,000 PSI. And it's purely all automatic, um, except for loading and unloading the machine and calling up which program you want to cut. One of the nice things about the machine because of the flexibility, it allows us to cut glass for everything that we've ever put into production. So all the way back to the 60s, if a customer breaks the glass, we can actually cut them a new one, it's no issue. And we can also print the glass. You guys print here the actual front face just for the Macintosh product. Correct. This process, I mean, how is it done with the color, the way yep. that you get it to be so rich? So the graphic designers over in engineering, they'll come up with obviously what the look and uh, the product's going to be like when we come out with a new one. But obviously the Macintosh green is the Macintosh green. Anything that's Macintosh blue is always the blue. So we have formulated them over the years to know what they're, they're gonna be. And, you know, because it's a, it's a full color printer, we can mix all the different colors together to get those Macintosh colors to put on 
to put on the panel. You know, the choice for Macintosh to use glass fronts, where did that come to be? Um, primarily because, well, a couple different reasons, you know, up until the 60s, all the Macintosh product was basically metal. They made the, the transition to all glass to give it A, a more modern look, but B, also, as a lot of competitors came onto the market, they were also using metal. And even today, if you notice, a lot of a lot of manufacturers, they kind of all look alike, you know? And so it's a, it's a black box, and the only way you can tell a lot of product apart is the logo. Right. And Macintosh didn't want to get stuck into that rut where they kind of looked like everybody else. They wanted something classier than just a metal front. So what better thing to stand the test of time because Macintosh products, they, they typically last forever. Yeah. And so does glass. And so really that's the reason why they decided to go with glass back starting in the 60s. You know, I know that, you know, Macintosh now to understand how this process goes, you know, I would have thought that silk screening or some sort of that manufacturing would have been a part of it. So we used to do the glass that way. Okay. And you know, the and even the difference between the the way we print the glass now and the way we print the metal, even though the metal is still silk screening and we used to do glass silk screening, it's a completely different process, glass versus metal. Charlie, what I'm looking at here looks like a work of art, my friend. Yeah, so this, this, is, this is actually how we do the um, nomenclature on the chassis. Depending on the chassis, this particular one only gets it on the backside here for this particular part. But if you were looking like at an MC275 chassis, that's actually got four different um, surfaces that have to be soak screened, which is a set up and tear down in between each of those different layers. Look at that mirror finish. Look at that gorgeous finish on there, my God. That's beautiful. This is some awesome stuff. Thank you. I think I'm ready to get on the inside of the Macintosh world? Is it time for is it time for the, the Transformers world? Yeah, Can we step into that? Absolutely. Oh, I'm excited. Listen guys, thank you for watching our video. This is Warren here with Charlie from Macintosh. Guys, make sure that you again like and subscribe. Check us out on our next video for gramophone.com. Thanks a lot, guys. See you next time.